I am a whistler, and I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. And here tonight, driving through this rain-swept countryside, are two young people about to embark on the greatest venture of their lives. Whether for better or for worse, only time will tell. that sign we should be there any minute that's nice Sherry. but it's also nice driving in the rain like this cut off from everything the past the future future oh no darling not the future the future is us i didn't mean it that way it's the isolation the feeling that you're in a world of your own that makes me happy but when i'm with you ted i always feel that way rain or shine Day or night. You're wonderful. Well, Alice, in a few minutes you'll be Mrs. Theodore Anthony Nichols II. Of New York? In fact. <laughs> If you didn't know. Oh, dear. I'm afraid you're going to be disappointed. Oh, we're coming out of the rain anyway. I'm sorry the justice isn't home. Oh, but I phoned this afternoon and made an appointment. Are you Mr. Nichols? Yes, that's right. I remember your call. I told my husband about it. You had to go to Gantville this afternoon on legal business. Oh, we don't mind waiting a while. He won't be back tonight. He phoned a half hour ago and said he wouldn't think of driving through this rain. But what will we do? and stop over at the hotel in Marston. It's just a few miles down the road. I'm sure the justice will be back early tomorrow. He'd be glad to accommodate you. Well, we'll see. Good night, Miss Good night. Good night. Well, I hope not. Maybe the spark plugs or something got a little wet. Looks like the end of the line. That's a pretty lame ending to a wedding night. Things could be worse, Sherry. No, but we can't stay here all night. I feel very comfortable. I'm tired. Well, we got to get the car fixed so we can go and be married tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Look, Alice, that's the place. Come on, you're going to get a good night's rest. I'll get the bags. Candace? 
do a thing for you, mister. Oh, have a heart. You can't brush us off like that. No use going in a long story. We're just plump full up. And that's the end of it. Please, monsieur. We've driven such a long time. Too bad, ma'am. We ain't got space left to board a mouse, let alone you two. Uh, well, uh, is there another place you can send us to? No, it's the only place in town, so I guess you best keep moving on. But we can't. My car broke down. Smitty's garage is five blocks down the street. He'll be glad to fix it for you. He ain't asleep or drunk. Well, thanks for your trouble, anyway. Come along, darling. Oh, just a minute, young fella. I just recollected there is a room, but it's in bad shape. Oh, that's OK. Just so long as it's a room. Well, that'll be $20. What? Well, giving you this room is risky, risky for me. We can dispense with that. Carry your own bags. I get little enough thanks for my job as tis without having to be a bellhop. Bridal suite. Paint meant to be. I'll get you some bedding. This chair isn't too bad. Yes, sleeping in it one night won't kill me. Nothing wrong with a bed. It's big enough for two. Oh. You two are married, ain't you? Well, uh, not yet. Not we... yet? Come on, you. Oh, no. If he doesn't stay, I don't stay. Well, suit yourself. I'm going to stick my neck out no further. Now it's all right, darling. I'll get 40 winks in the garage while the mechanic fixes the car. That's where we should have stayed, together in the car. Oh, I thought we'd never be separated again. Now, honey, it's only till tomorrow. You're right, Jerry. That's a spirit. Well, you might at least turn around while I kiss my bride to be good night. I'll make it fast. I got work to do. Good night, darling. Good night, Jerry. Sleep tight. Foreigner, ain't she? She's French, if it's any of your business. Seems to me Yankee women is trouble enough without getting tangled up with foreigners. Mind if I leave this here while I look after my car? Ain't gonna be responsible. Better take it along with you. Uh, aren't you forgetting about the bedding? Sure enough. Dang busybody. Never know what to expect next. This isn't just the way you'd planned your honeymoon, is it, Ted? But don't be too unhappy. It's only a few more hours till you and Alice will be united forever. Sleepyhead. It's me, Ted. Oh, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I guess I got the wrong room. No. No, this is it all right. I'm positive. Who are you looking for, bud? Uh, a young lady. She occupied this room last night. Don't know nothing about that. Oh, I guess the clerk moved her to another room. Thanks, anyway. Good morning, sir. Anything I can do for you? No, uh, I, I'd like to see the night clerk. Oh, well, I'm sorry, but Mr. Anderson has gone off duty. I'm afraid he's asleep. But it's very important. I'm sure he won't mind. What is your name, please? Nichols. Ted Nichols. Oh, Anderson, there's a uh, Mr. Nichols here to see you. He says it's very important. Right. He 
says he'll be right down. Thanks. Anderson. What room did you move my girl to? I didn't move her any place. Now, don't you try to get me mixed up in anything. Oh, I get it. Well, forget about the 20. Where is she? Well, how do I know where she went? I ain't no gypsy mind reader. You mean she left here? Well, sure. About a half hour after you went away last night? No, that's impossible. She wouldn't do that. Well, listen, I'm not going to argue with you. If you don't mind, I'd like to get some sleep. No, you don't. Not till you tell me what you did with that girl. Well, I didn't do anything with her. You're out of your mind. Take your hands off of me. Well, you're lying. Why'd you say she ran away, huh? You're trying to hide something, and I'm going to find out what it is. Uh, Mr. Hart, there's a disturbance in the lobby. You'd better come right out here. I don't know anything about where she is. Why, you, you leave me alone. Get him away from me. He's crazy. He's crazy. Get him away. Let go of me. I'll choke the truth out of him. What's the trouble? I don't know, Mr. Hart. I rented a room to his girl last night, and she checked out and gave him a slip, and, and now he's trying to blame me for it. Oh, that's a lie. My girl wouldn't do a thing like that. I'll handle this. How could you render a room? We had no vacancies last night. Well, I felt sorry for the lady. She looked so tired, almost like she was going to pass out. And I let her have the room we were going to paint. It was strictly against my orders to rent that room. And strictly against the law to pocket the 20 bucks I gave him and not let her register. That's why he's lying. My girl didn't run away. He's just trying to cover up for some reason. Well, he's out of his mind. After he left, I took the register down to her room and, and she signed it. We can check up on that easy enough. Sure, and on the $20, too. It's entered in the books and crossed off. Why? Oh, well, of course she came to me and said she had to get back to the city. And wouldn't I let her have the $20? And she didn't have money to pay her fare. I should have chased them both out when they came in. And I wouldn't be in this trouble now. Well, listen, you're going to have nothing but trouble, brother, if you don't tell me what you did with her. Now, just a minute, just a minute. We better let the police settle this. Well, that's fine with me. Crandall, call Captain Griggs and ask him to come over here right away. Yes, sir. Please step into my office. And Anderson, you bring the register. Well, isn't that the girl's signature? Well, the way it's been scratched out, I can't be sure. Mm, you don't seem to be sure about a lot of things. You can't talk me out of this, Captain. I'm not trying to, but Anderson here explained everything. But don't you understand it couldn't have happened that way? Alice is a French girl. She, she's only been in this country a few weeks. She wouldn't know where to go. That still doesn't prove Anderson's lying. Why should he? Because he must have had something to do with her disappearance. Oh, well, if that's the way you feel, are you prepared to file a charge against him, say, for abduction? It's about the most serious charge you can make against anyone. And you might be laying yourself open for a lot of trouble. I'm not accusing him of that, but I've got to find Alice. Well, you've certainly gone about it the wrong way. As a matter of fact, Anderson had a pretty good case of assault and battery against you. I'll hold him if you want to come down to headquarters and sign a complaint. Well, I'd just as soon forget the whole thing if you'll promise to keep away from here. Anderson's right, Captain. It would be bad publicity for the hotel. They're being very kind to you, Nichols. Come on, let's go. Have you got a car? Yes, but it's being fixed. Won't be ready till 9 o'clock. It's almost that now. Now, look, I'd advise you not to go back in there and create a disturbance. You're getting off plenty easy as it is. Well, I have to be careful in some of these small towns. A stranger doesn't get a chance. Yeah. Seems to me you got a pretty rough deal. How do you know so much about it? I was in the lobby, I heard the whole argument. I guess this is the first bit of excitement they've had around here for months. Well, it may seem funny to you, but it's no joke to me. Oh, I meant no offense. I'm really very sympathetic. I only wish there was something I could do to help you. No, thank you. Uh, I've got a little time to kill. I'd just as soon work this out for myself. How about a cup of coffee? I'm sure you could use one. No, thanks. I can understand how you let your emotions run away with you. It's hard to make a man in love believe that such a thing could happen to him. What are you, a philosopher? <laughs> I've been called many things, but never that. Well, I don't really care what you are, but get this straight. Alice didn't run out on me. I... 
I don't know what happened to her, but she certainly didn't leave of her own accord. Maybe not. But I've been called in on many cases to help find a missing person, only to discover that he or she didn't want to be found. Oh, I get it. You're a lawyer. No, no, I'm a private detective. Glad to know you. But I think I'll handle this alone. Well, wait a minute. I'm not looking for a job. You're having a pretty rough time, and I thought you could use a few friendly tips. If that's the way you feel about it. Oh, all right, trainer. Uh, now tell me, if you were I, how would you go about it? Well, first I'd take a photograph of Alice to the Bureau of Missing Persons. By the way, let's see what she looks like. I haven't got her picture with me. Fine thing. You see, we left in a hurry, but I know there are several in my apartment. Where's that? Back in the city. I'll get them right away. My car will be ready by now. Oh, but uh, suppose Alice is still in this town somewhere. Uh, never. Whether she ran away or whatever happened, I'm sure you won't find her around these parts. Got to admit, you're a pretty convincing Joe. <laughs> well, now, if you want me to help you, I must know the facts. Wasn't there anyone in this country she knew beside you? Sure, she had some in-laws. Well, then she was married. Yes, to an American flyer. Ooh. Oh, I know what you're thinking, but you're wrong. Her husband's dead. You see, uh, Alice wasn't just a starry-eyed kid. Life had kicked her around quite a bit. Yeah, stick to the facts, Ted. Now, who are these in-laws? Uh, well, I never asked her, and she never told me. <laughs> when did you meet her? About two weeks ago. What? Oh, I, I know that sounds pretty sudden, but sometimes you can live a lifetime in two weeks. That's the way it seemed to me. Well, after 15 years of marriage, I can understand that. Now, tell me, how did this two weeks of a lifetime start? I was staying for the weekend at my cabin on Lake Shawnee. It was Sunday night, my last night there. My pipe was drawing well, and I was listening to the hundred different sounds you hear in the country at night, when suddenly I heard someone walking through the brush. Hello, who's there? Here? Over here, please. What happened? My ankle. Let me see. Oh, you're hurting me. Oh, I'm sorry, but I don't think it's broken, probably sprained. Perhaps I can try again to stand on it. No, you better not. Where do you live? Oh, no, I, I don't want to go back there. Well, you certainly won't get far on that ankle. Please, if you could just help me to the bus station. I must get to the city. No, you'll never make a bus now. Besides, that ankle needs attention. It's starting to swell. What can I do? Well, I can take it my place. It's close by. I'll strap up the ankle so you can walk on it. Oh, I don't know what to do. It'll be all right, really. You take the little bag. Now, put your arm around my shoulder. Oh, yeah. There we go. Up easy. All right? There. And from that moment on, I was sunk. I couldn't help feeling there was something almost symbolic in the way I found her, the way she came to me. The facts, Ted, the facts. Those are facts, the way we felt. You mean the way you felt, like a kid picking up a stray cat. Don't you have any heart at all? Never mind about me. What happened next? When we got to my cabin, I bandaged her ankle. I'm so grateful to you. But now, I must be coming. Now, stay off that foot. If you want to start up that swelling again. You stay right here and I'll fix an ice pack. You're going to so much trouble, monsieur. Let's drop the formalities. The name's Ted. Ted Nichols. What's yours? Alice. Alice? Oh, Alice. That's a beautiful name. Alice what? Alice Dupre. Here we are. You're taking such fine care of me. You must be a doctor. No, an engineer. But I certainly enjoy pinch hitting for a doctor. You would make a very good one. You know something? What? I feel all better already. Oh, well, that's fine. But uh, considering the state of your health and the fact that there are no more buses tonight, I... Oh, no, I, I can't stay here. Oh, now, look, Miss Dupre, let's be sensible. There's a beautiful bedroom in there, and it's all yours. In the morning, I'll drive you into the city. I'm going in anyway. 
All right, I'll stay. On one condition. I'll sleep right here. There. But I don't want to put you out. Please don't be difficult. I'll get your bag. Thank you. And the way she said my name, I knew I wanted to go on hearing her say it the rest of my life. You got it bad, son. The next day, she felt lots better. I took her into town with me. She spent the day looking for a place to live. And that night, she came back to you, because there wasn't a single room to be had in the entire city. That's right. Well, don't you believe she told me the truth? Why should I? All it actually proves is that you're a soft touch. But go on, let's hear how she spellbound you with her domestic skill. Well, as a matter of fact, she did cook and keep the apartment clean. She <laughs> figured that was the least she could do. Mm -hmm. I bet she could whip up a terrific onion soup. Hey, how do you know all this? It's the pattern, my boy. Then maybe this will convince you that she's not the kind of a girl you still take her to be. Is there anything you can't cook to perfection? Papa insisted that I know how to cook. He used to say that there was no other pleasure that lasted a man from his birth to his death. You know something, Alice? You've got just about everything. Alice, what's the matter? Anything I've done? Yes. You've been too kind to me, and I don't deserve it. Ted, I've made up my mind. I'm leaving tomorrow. I'm going back to France. I'm lost here in this country. It frightens me. Now, you listen to me. Today, I had an offer from a firm in Brazil. I leave in two weeks. I'll be gone six months. Now, tell me. What's wrong with you staying here and taking care of this place till I come back? In the meantime, you can look for work, do anything you wish. That's the trouble, Ted. You want to do so much, and you don't even know anything about me. I know everything about you I want to. You never even asked me what I was running away from that night. Well, I'm sure if you'd wanted me to know, you'd have told me. You have a right to know. Why? I was in love once with an American soldier, a transport pilot. He was killed in France the night we were married. About six months ago, my mother passed away. I was left alone with nothing but sad memories. My life became unbearable. So I decided to come to America. My husband had told me to go to his father if anything happened to him. Uh, why didn't you go there? His father had died. There were other relatives and aunts and cousins. I never felt at ease with them. Then one night, when I was alone in the house, one of them came back. And he... Oh, I couldn't stand that. I had to run away. Oh, I don't even want to think about it. It's like a bad dream. Oh, damn. You don't have to think about it, darling. Well, I'm aware. I'm glad it happened. Otherwise, I'd never have met you. Now, well, speaking of dreams, don't you think you'd better get to bed? Yes, it is getting late. Hadn't we better sleep? Hmm? You know, heads and tails. Heads again. And you win again. Well, I win every night. You have very bad luck. Good night, Ted. You know, I think I'm very fortunate to have met you. Why I must leave. Will you marry me? Marry you? But I've only just met you. You don't know me. Please, Alice. You couldn't love me so soon. You'll be sorry for me because I'm alone. 
You pity me. But pity isn't love. And she went on that way, trying to convince me that I was mistaking pity for love. That pity was a terrible thing because it meant that you looked down upon a person as weaker than yourself. And when I would finally realize that, I'd begin to hate her. She was right. No, she was wrong. I didn't pity her in the least. She was my idea of an ideal woman. I'm telling you all of this only to prove that marriage was my idea. I'm the one that insisted. She fought it every step of the way. Does that sound like the kind of a girl who was trying to take me? Mm, she might be extremely clever. Now I give up. And she never mentioned the name of her in-laws to you? Not that I remember. Doesn't that strike you as being somewhat strange? Not particularly. After the first time, we didn't talk about them again. Mm. Anything else you can recall about her? Oh, wait. There was one other thing. It happened later that same night. What's wrong? What's the matter? A man, through the window. There's no one there. What happened? But I saw him. He was going through my things. And when I screamed, he went out through the window. Sure you weren't dreaming? Oh, but no, I tell you, I saw him. Well, if there was a man, you certainly frightened him away when you screamed. Oh, but you're laughing at me. No, I'm not. Look, I locked the window. Try to get some sleep, huh? Good night, darling. I still don't know if that really happened or if it was only a bad dream. She just had a nightmare. Too many crepe Suzettes. And now I'm going to make you a prediction. When we reach your apartment, you'll find a note and all her things gone. Well, be that as it may, I've still got to find her. Mr. Nichols. Where's the missus? Uh, uh, she stayed up at the lodge. I had to come into town for a few hours to take care of some business. Any mail for me? No, not a thing, Mr. Nichols. Thanks. So far, I'm 50% wrong. It'll be an even hundred before another minute. Want a bet? Uh-uh. Now you'd have to give me odds. Everything just as it was when Alice and I left here. Mm. Come on. Now who's right? Okay, okay, I'll take it all back. Now get me your picture and I'll go to work. Here, take your choice. Is her husband with her? Yes, that was taken the day of their marriage. Look what I found, trainer. Her marriage certificate. 
That's her married name, see? It's Barclay. And her husband's name was John. Barclay. Barclay, where have I heard that name before? I've got it. Lake Shawnee. It's that big place near the water. The Barclay House, they call it. Now I'm beginning to understand a few things. It must have been the Barclay House she was running away from, and that cousin. Maybe he had something to do with her disappearance. Come on, trainer. Let's get up there and find out. Wait a minute, Nichols. What is it? You walked right into that one, didn't you? But now, at least, you know just where you stand. There are others, shall we say, interested in Alice. And that marriage certificate must be of great importance to someone. That's why Trainer went to all this trouble to get it away from you. You're on your own now, Ted, and with no time to spare. That man I came in with, did you see him leave? Why, yes, about ten minutes ago. Did he say anything to you? No. He asked, uh, he asked me to call him a cab. He seemed in a hurry. Is there anything wrong? There sure is. Yes, sir. What is it? I want to see Mr. Barclay, and don't tell me he isn't home. Well, now... What's the meaning of this? Forcing your way into a strange home? Never mind. Just tell Barclay that Ted Nichols is here. What is it, Mother? Mother? This is Mr. Nichols' son. He insists on seeing you. So you're Barclay. What did you do with Alice? Please. Please, young man. You don't realize what you're doing. This is her husband. Alice's husband. Her husband? You? No, 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 that can't be. That's a lie. Be careful what you say. But Alice told me that her husband was dead. Yes, I know. Killed in France on her wedding night, and after the war she came here to live with my father but found he had died. That's what she told you, isn't it? Yes, that's just what she said. I really don't owe you any explanation, but under the circumstances, I suppose you have a right to know. Providing you put that gun away. Mother, I can handle this alone. Cigarette? No. I uh, met Alice in Normandy shortly after the invasion. I was in the Air Corps, a transport pilot for paratroopers. To make it brief, we fell in love and were married. That same night, I left for a run over Germany and was knocked over. There was a false report of my death. Under the shock and the climax of weeks of strain, Alice's mind snapped. Oh, yes, she recovered, except for occasional relapses when she believes herself to be a widow and free to marry again. Yeah, that's what she gave me to understand. Oh, no doubt she did. It made it sound very logical. The only thing that makes us realize she's about to have one of these spells are her strange delusion she's being mistreated at home. That's exactly what she told me. And uh, she usually builds it up into quite a tale of horror. In spite of everything, I don't believe a word of it. I know you're lying. Would you like to hear it from her own lips? You wouldn't dare. Mother! Would you come here a minute, please? Yes, John. What is it? See if Alice is all right. I want to take Mr. Nichols up to see her. Oh, but aren't you afraid it might excite her too much? I'm quite sure Mr. Nichols will have sense enough not to upset her. Very well. I've been thanking my lucky stars that we found Alice before it was too late. It's a good thing that minister wasn't at home last night. 
Yeah. You know all the details, don't you? Couldn't be by any chance you have a fellow called Trainer working for you. Indeed I did. He was the man who traced Alice. He checked with the service station at the lake. You stopped there for some gas before driving back to town and the attendant knew you. Then why didn't you come to my apartment instead of letting things go this far? Mother and I did the moment Trainer phoned us and gave us your address. It had taken him quite a while to locate you in the city. We missed you by minutes. It's a good thing you told the clerk where you were going. Still sounds scurry to me. All right, John. You may come up now. Please remember, you must only stay a minute. What's wrong? What happened? I'm sorry, Ted. Please forgive me. Forgive you? Well, you don't mean you're really married to that man. Yes, I am his wife. You said you wanted to hear it from her own lips? Well, you have. Now, will you be good enough to leave? I'll see Mr. Nichols to the door. Arnold, you may come out now. You'll forget in time. Just keep yourself occupied. Or better yet, try to get away for a while. I'm leaving shortly for South America. I've got a job down there. Well, good for you. I wish I could get away myself. These past few years with Alice, ever since we got back from France, have been trying. Oh, I suppose so. Get up, kid. Show's over. <laughs> well, the best of luck to you, and have a good trip. Oh, thanks. takes care of Mr. Nichols. If you'd stayed away from her in the first place, we wouldn't have had all this trouble. Let's not go through all that again. I told you I was sorry, but I made up for it now. You gotta hand it to Mom for putting this over. You realize, of course, you made a mistake. I did? Sure, that dope's going to South America. He naturally would have taken Alice with him. If you hadn't insisted on bringing her back, all this could have been avoided. I don't make my plans with a crystal ball. When you have a fortune in the palm of your hand, you don't take chances. If it comes right down to it, she doesn't deserve the estate anyway. I didn't come here for the estate in the first place. I told you I knew nothing about it. You can keep the money in the house. All I want is to be with Ted. Maybe that's the way you feel right now. But that boyfriend of yours is apt to change your mind. Never. I swear neither one of us will ever bother you. Please, please believe me. Let me go now. Or I'll never see him again. Sorry, kid. You'll have to do it mother's way. Pretty girl like you won't have any trouble finding another guy. I hate all of you. <laughs> Better go downstairs and see Trainer. Pay him off and get rid of him. What are you going to do with her now, Mom? Yeah. You don't suppose she's going to stay here quietly after we clear out, do you? We'll talk about that later. Alice might not agree with what I have in mind. Sorry you had to wait so long. It's all right, Mr. Barkley. It's not your fault. We were so rudely interrupted by Mr. Nichols. Well, it's a good thing you got here first and told us what to expect. How's Mrs. Barkley feeling now? Did it upset her much to see Nichols again? No, she took it like a soldier, but I'm glad it's over. Hmm. Well, let's get down to points. Oh, sure. This is what I got from his apartment. Well, she even took our marriage license with her. Yeah, the funny part is Nichols didn't know your wife's married name until he found that certificate in his desk. Poor fellow. He has my sympathy. Yeah. 
Mine too. Well, I believe this should take care of everything. Thank you. Thank you. You've done a good job. Any time, Mr. Barkley. I hope you'll call me again if I can be of service. Well, that's not very likely. You see, we're leaving here. Oh? We've sold this place to make Alice forget about the past. Mm -hmm. Thanks again, and goodbye. Goodbye to you, sir. He didn't act suspicious, did he? Not in the least. And look what he brought us. The only piece of evidence that would have made it possible for Alice to prove her claim. Now we're in the clear. With that town in France destroyed, where the marriage took place and all its records gone, she hasn't got a chance. She could still make a lot of trouble for us if we let her go. Wait a minute. Gives me an idea. I hope you know what you're doing. Spencer, 7925. This is Shawnee, 1368. What do you want? I bought them trunks, Mrs. Barkley. Well, haven't you brought them up yet? Yes, yes, operator, I'm holding on. Well, don't stand there. Go and bring them up to my room right away. Yes, ma'am. Is this Woodland Sanitarium? I'd like to speak to Dr. Grantland, please. So Alice actually came to this country only about three weeks ago. She hasn't been here for several years, as Barclay wants you to believe. That changes everything, Ted, doesn't it? Something seems very wrong. But after what Alice just told you, you still can't go to the police. You've got to find out for yourself. And there's only one way to do it. Go back and somehow see her alone. Yes, I was. What are you doing this late out here in the garden? Well, I rang the bell. No one answered. Nobody home. Hold it, Duke. Will they tell you where they went? They left here for good, bag and baggage. New owners are coming next week. That's why I'm sticking around, waiting for them to show. Well, never mind that. They take Alice with them? Sure. 
They took her along, but she ain't gonna be with them. What are you talking about? Oh, she's been sick. They're taking her to some rest home. She's been carrying on pretty bad. Out of her head, I expect. Did they tell you the name of the place? No. But I heard the missus mention it when she was telephoning. What was it? It was, um... I clean forgot. Funny how I've been getting lately. I just can't remember a thing. Well, please try to remember it. <laughs> Hold it, Duke. He don't mean no harm. Well, it had something to do with trees. Elmwood, Wildwood, Pinecrest. Uh, I ain't that terrible. I know the name of the doctor, though. I know his name as well as I know my own, but I, I sure can't recollect the name of the place. OK, OK, what's the doctor's name? Bradland. Why didn't you ask me that in the first place? Drat that fella. Now I'll be awake all night trying to think of that woodland place. Woodland. That's it. Hey! Oh, nope. Darn the foil. It serves him right for being in such a hurry. Come on, boy. What took them so long? Do you want me to tell you exactly what the photographer said about making enlargements at this hour of the night? Save it. Ah. Just as I thought. Yes, my eyes are still pretty sharp. This is a picture of Alice Barkley and her husband, John, taken in France. What's so unusual about that? Only that the man who told me he was her husband and hired me to find her doesn't look anything like this guy. It's a fine time to find it out. Well, I couldn't be sure from this small picture I took away from Nichols. That's why I had it enlarged. So you've been on the wrong side of the fence. I'm afraid so. I'm sorry, boss. Anything I can do? Not at the moment. Where are you going? Back to the Barclay house to ask a few questions. Sanitarium. I'd like to speak to Dr. Grant. Well, just a moment. It's for you, Doctor, on extension one. Dr. Grantland speaking. Uh, this is, uh, my name's Simpson, Doctor, Howard Simpson. You've been uh, highly recommended to me, and I'd like to come over and see you. Well, that seems to be your trouble, Mr. Simpson. I uh, have these pains in the back of my head. Oh, sure, I've had a physical checkup, x-rays and everything. Very well, then drop in and see me tomorrow. I'll put the nurse back on to give you an appointment. No, then just a minute, Doctor. Tomorrow might be too late. Well, you see, when I have these pains, I have moments of despondency, afraid of what I might do. As a matter of fact, I'm feeling pretty low right now. Then maybe you'd better come over right away. Well, thank you, Doctor. Thank you very much. Come on, talk. I tell you, I didn't have anything to do with them people. I don't know nothing about what they was doing. You mean you worked right here and don't know what was going on? Nope, I steered clear of them. I didn't like them any more than old Ed Barkley did himself after he took them in. Ed Barkley? Who's he? He was John's father. I'd been with him since before John was even born. John's father? I never heard of him. Uh, you wouldn't, because he's dead. Same as John, who was killed in the war. You say John was lost in the war? That's right. Hmm. Well, who was the fellow I talked to this afternoon? Well, that's Charlie, John's cousin. What about the old lady and the others? She's Ed Barkley's sister-in-law, and them's her children. They were the closest living relations to the old man. Except in this here French girl, maybe. Seeing she's John's widow. Hmm. And this place really belongs to her. Come to think of it, mister, you're about right. Come on, Pop, you've got things to tell the police.
I'm uh, Howard Simpson. The doctor's expecting me. Oh, yes. Come in, please. Right this way. This is Mr. Simpson, Dr. Grant. Oh, yes, Mr. Simpson. Sit down, won't you? Thank you. I'm rather curious to know who referred you to me. Uh, well, you, you see, Doctor, my home's in uh, Albany. You came here especially to see me? No, not exactly. Uh, I'm on my vacation. See, for the past year, I've been under the care of Dr. Abner Green. Abner Green? Never heard of him. Well, uh, he's heard of you. He told me that if I had one of my spells while I was down here, that I was to contact you at once. I see. Very kind of him. Where do you have those pains? Right here. Mm -hmm. Take off your coat. I'll check up on your heart. You know, sometimes these symptoms are uh, merely indicative of a nervous condition. You don't seem like the nervous type. Well, looks are sometimes deceiving, Doctor. I'm constantly aware of that. I suppose uh, Dr. Green has those x-rays you spoke of? Oh, oh, yes. Good. See if you can get Dr. Green on the phone for me. Yes, Doctor. Long distance? Give me the Albany operator, please. Hmm, you have a very erratic heartbeat. All right, thank you. All the lines to Albany are busy. The operator will call us back. Oh, never mind. It can wait till morning. Doctor? I'll take care of that while you're staying here. Oh, don't worry. I, I had no intention of using it. I know, I know. You just carry it around for self-protection. Yes, that's right. I travel a great deal, sometimes late at night. Oh, that must be the new patient, Doctor. Excuse me a moment. I'll be right back. Sit down, Mr. Simpson, and try to relax. We don't generally have this kind of disturbance. The woman must be pretty sick. Isn't just a young girl, too. Very sad case. Total loss of memory. Even insists she isn't married to the man we know as her husband. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Simpson. Maybe I shouldn't have said anything. Oh, that's all right. Dr. Grantland has handled many cases like hers and always with great success. And I'm sure he'll take good care of you, too. You'd better get to bed, Mr. Simpson. I'll give you a complete examination in the morning. Is Mr. Simpson's room ready? Yes, I'm putting him in 207. Good. Did you bring some things with you? Well, no, you see, I didn't expect I'd have to stay. No, that's all right. We'll give you what you'll need. This way, please. Now, please don't worry. The doctor will quiet her very soon. Now, this is Mr. Simpson. Will you get him some sleeping garments? He didn't come prepared to stay. Certainly. He'll be in 207. This way, please. Get ready for bed. The doctor will be in to see you once more before you go to sleep. Terrible son. Poor dear, she must be suffering so I can't bear to walk. I know it's awful, Mother, but we're doing the best we can for her. What's the matter now? <gasps> we can't get her to quiet down. She falls asleep for a few minutes and starts all over again.
like to do this, but I guess we'll have to use the jacket. No, no, no! No! Step in here a moment so we can complete the financial arrangements. Oh, dearest, don't ever leave me again. But, darling, I didn't run away. I know I was too trusting, but they came to me to the hotel, begged me to forget what happened, said they would take me to you. We'd go home and have a big wedding. That hotel clerk must have given him plenty to make up that phony story about you running out on me. But never mind that now, darling. Where are your clothes? In there. We've seen the last of her. Mm. We've just about time to make the plane. Sybil and Arnold will be worried. Looks to me like Nichols' car. It's impossible. It couldn't be. But if I hadn't told you I was his wife, they would have killed both of us. I know. I understand. Don't talk about it now. Please hurry. I'm ready, dear. Fast, mister. You're holding the wrong man. That's the one we want. I don't know what your game is, but I owe it something to you, too. Just a minute. He doesn't deserve that. You'd be in a fine fix if it wasn't for him. Well, I still don't know whose side you're on. I can't blame you, Nichols. I admit I made a mistake. They certainly had me fooled. Okay, forget it. But that doesn't go for that phony doctor. I demand his arrest for keeping Alice here against her will. This institution is of high professional standing. When Mr. Barkley brought this lady here, he proved to me that he was her husband. He had every legal right to put her under my care. But I told you he was lying. And in spite of that, you didn't bother to find out whether he was actually the man whose name appeared on the marriage license. All right, cut out the argument. You're all going to the DA's office and you can explain everything to him. What about Mrs. Barkley and her other son and daughter? They'll be there waiting for us. Come on. Oh, uh, I almost forgot. There's a man locked up in the closet of my room. You'd better let him out before he suffocates and I'm accused of murder. I'd let him out. Come on, Doc, you too. Pardon me, sweetheart, if I've asked you this before, but are you nervous? Not no. this time, darling. <laughs> You certainly were lucky, Ted. It might have ended differently, with you and Alice worlds apart. 
but fate this time was on your side.